Okay, in this video we're going to continue what we were doing in the last video where we were using this utility function here um, u equals x to the one-third times y to the two-thirds and we were talking about what these indifference curves mean and how you can look at these level curves and and uh, look at this little legend over here and kind of tell how much utility you're getting for different combinations of the x good and the y good. But we didn't really use a lot of math last time. This time we're going to bring in the calculus so that we can take this analysis a few steps further. So what I want to do first is talk about marginal utility. Now you know by now that marginal utility means additional utility from consuming one more unit of a product. Now here marginal utility is going to tell us about the rate at which marginal utility goes up at different points in our uh, indifference curve map here. And it's going to be different at every point and it's also going to be different depending on whether we're talking about consuming more of our X good or whether we're talking about consuming more of our Y good. Now in order to calculate that slope, that rate of change that utility is going to be increasing at with respect to x and y, we take the partial derivative of utility with respect to x. That will give us the marginal utility of x. So let's just go ahead and do that. The, the marginal utility function with respect to x, which we'll use this kind of notation for, mu with little subscript x, take the derivative of this function with respect to x. So multiply by the exponent, that's one-third, times x. Subtract 1 from that exponent. 1 third minus 1 is minus 2 thirds. And then the y to the 2 thirds, since that's multiplied, that stays exactly the same. Now we could simplify that by uh, rewriting this as 1 third y to the 2 thirds times x to the, sorry, divided by x to the 2 thirds. And we'll do that in just a minute. Let's go ahead and calculate the marginal utility function um, for y though. Take the derivative with respect to y, so we're going to multiply by the two-thirds. x to the one-third doesn't change because we're not taking the derivative with respect to x and times y, but we have to subtract one from that two-thirds. That's going to leave us with negative one-third as the exponent for y after we take the derivative of it. Now what can you do with these? Well, Let's just do this with the marginal utility of x function here. Let's plug in a number uh, for x and a number for y and see what happens. So let's plug in, for example, into this function x equals 2 and y equals 2. And let's see what happens. Well, first let's look at where we are on our graph. That would put us at this point right here. And if we plug in 2 and 2 into this function, what you're going to get is uh, one third times x to the minus two, two to the minus two thirds times y to the two thirds. Take a minute and calculate that. I'll pause the video and I'll do the same. So it's pretty obvious what that's going to turn out to be, but I wanted to show you why. By putting the x to the minus two thirds on the bottom and, and calling that x to the two thirds, you can see that you're going to have 2 to the 2 thirds power on the bottom, 1.587, and 2 to the 2 thirds power on top, that's the y to the 2 thirds on top, and so those are going to cancel and all that's going to leave you with the marginal utility of x at this point right here is 1 third. What does that mean? Well that means that for each additional unit of x that we consume as we go this direction, our utility is increasing at the rate of one-third of a util, at the rate of one-third of whatever units you are, one-third util per additional x that we consume. So we can see that would be going from two to three here, and that would put us at a point like this. And what that's telling us is that that's going to be approximately um, adding about a third of a util. Now it's not going to be exactly a third of a util because one-third is the slope right at that point 
and that's but that slope is getting flatter as we go to the right um, see my video called utility one if if you're uncertain about why that is now what about if we uh, increase one in the y direction well for similar reasons we're going to have if we start at this point where x equals two and y equals two then two to the one-third divided by two to the one-third that's going to cancel and the marginal utility of y at that point is going to be two-thirds so two-thirds uh, which means that utility is increasing much faster in this direction, the y direction than it is in the x direction and we can see that must be true because when we go from 2 to 3 on the y-axis, we cross over an indifference curve. And this indifference curve, this light blue or kind of gray one here, is for 2.5 utils. We cross over that indifference curve when we get one more y, but we don't when we get one more x. So the marginal utility of y at that point is higher than it is for x. Now, of course, this is going to be very different depending on where we are on this map. Um, but now that you, you see what these marginal utility functions are and where they come from, the next step, this is the last thing we'll do in this video, is we need to talk about the marginal rate of substitution, what we call the MRS x y. This is the marginal rate of substitution of x for y. And what this marginal rate of substitution does is tells us what the slope of an indifference curve is at each point. Now, as, as you can tell, the slope is steep up here, but it gets flatter here and even flatter as we go out here. Let's talk about what that means really quickly. Uh, at this point, the slope is pretty steep. And what that tells us is that to keep the same utility, remember that's what these curves tell us, they're indifference curves, to keep us indifferent, the same utility, the slope at that point tells us if I give up one y, how many x's, let's just rise over run, how many x's do I need in order to keep me indifferent? Now at that point it looks like that slope is about minus one because if we give up one y you can replace it with one x. Now if we go way over here where it's very flat, say at around the point uh, about two on the y and five on the x, if you take one of my y's you're gonna have to give me, well we have to go even off the screen here, you're gonna have to give me a lot of x's to make up for it. Now why is, why is it here that if you take one of my y's you have to give me a lot of x's? Well because at this point we don't have a lot of y and we have a lot of x's. So if you're going to take another y from me you're going to have to compensate me with a lot of x. Over here I have a lot of y compared to x but still you can take one y and give me one x for it. Why? Because well I have so many y's um, I'm willing to give up one just if you give me one more x. So the marginal rate of substitution is the slope. It tells you how many y you're willing to give up to get one more x is how you interpret that slope. How do we calculate that slope at a point? Well it's, it's kind of a very simple uh, formula. Mar the marginal rate of substitution of x for y is equal to the marginal utility of x divided by the marginal utility of y. So what are we going to do? Well we're going to take this function and we're going to divide it by this function. Now that looks complicated but in my, my intermediate micro math review video we saw that this kind of thing is actually pretty simple to do. Let me get on a new, uh, well I won't get on a new page, we can do it right down here. It's not very, it's not as complicated as it looks. We can write this marginal utility of x function as, as I kind of mentioned before this way as one-third times y to the two-thirds over x to the two-thirds. Now if we're going to divide this function by the marginal utility of y function then what do you do? You invert and multiply. Well that marginal utility of y function is going to be 
x to the one-third over y to the one-third with another two-thirds in the numerator, right? So that marginal utility of y function, I'm sorry, I'm being so messy here. Let me go way over here to the right where I have a little space and write that for you. We can rewrite that marginal utility of y function this way as um, two-thirds x to the one-third over y to the one-third. What we're going to do if we're going to divide the marginal utility by the marginal utility of y, x divided by y, we're going to invert this function and multiply by it. We did this in my math review video, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it here. So if we do that, what we're going to end up with is uh, on the top is the y to the one-third, on the bottom is the x to the one-third, and then we're going to move that, that two-thirds to the bottom also here, right? Now what happens? Well, we have a y to the two-thirds times a y to the one-third. That's just y. We have a one-third on the top divided by a two-thirds on the bottom. So that's just going to be, it's just like one-half, one-half divided by two-thirds. So that's, uh, we'll just put a two on the bottom. And then an x times two-thirds, x to the two-thirds times an x to the one-third is just an x. So our marginal rate of substitution of x for y is simply this function y over 2x. Let's look at a point. Say at this point where x equals 2 and y equals 2, we want to know the slope. What's the marginal rate of substitution right there? Well, just plug in the y, which we said was 2 at that point, over 2 times 2, which is 4, and you see that the slope at that point is 1 half. One more time, what does that mean? Well, that means at that point, if you take one of my y's, you're going to have to replace it with two x's to get me back on that indifference curve, roughly speaking, anyway. Okay? Now that you have that, I'm going to end this video. In the next video, we're going to use this marginal rate of substitution as just the ratio of the marginality of x divided by the marginal utility of y. We're going to use this key idea to solve for, suppose I have this utility function, x to the one-third times y to the two-thirds. Suppose we give this guy some money. What is the optimal point for him? How many x would he want to buy with his money, and how many y would he like to buy with his money? So we'll solve that problem in the next part.